Hi, good afternoon. Actually, Fabian will start this presentation, so I'll hand over to him. <laughs> so, hi everyone. Showing, thanks for showing up. Um, today we're going to uh, introduce you to the ESA initiative, the EO Open Science Catalog. Um, First, I'll give you a quick outline. So, Anka will present you the ESA EO Open Science uh, as a whole. Uh, then she will talk about the uh, elements of the ESA EO Open Science. And then she will get into the minutia of the Open Science Catalog. Then we'll talk about the details of the Open Science Catalog, how it is implemented, key technologies, the architecture, and then I'll go give a brief overview of the specific components that make up the Open Science Catalog. Um, so, please, Anke, introduce us. Uh, thanks, Fabian. Quite high. Okay. Um, so, my name is Anka Angela. I'm an Open Science Platform Engineer in ESA, like um, I was just introduced. But actually, what that means is that, or my role is actually sitting between the digital platform section and the earth science section. Um, so, this means that we work, or my work is focused on building. Um, digital platforms or digital tools that help the work of our um, earth scientists. And actually, I'm very lucky that Edzer was um, speaking before me because he introduced this topic of open science quite well. Um, and just to give you a bit of context on where this project is coming from, uh, it's actually quite a new project and we started working on this since just the beginning of the year, so just a few, a few months ago. Uh, but the problem goes um, way back. So if you, if you were in the audience and you listened to um, my colleague from um, the ground segments, and Nikolas Hanovsky, uh, he presented a lot of um, details for the digital twins and all of the satellite missions that we have available out there. And um, imagine that we have all this um, mission data that has been delivered by all our satellites, and more than 40 satellites that are either Earth explorers, that are like science missions, um, addressing very particular uh, science domains, so looking at the cryosphere or gravity, things like this, but also the Copernicus Sentinels um, and all the other third-party missions, contributing missions, and the meteorological ones. So I'm, I'm not going to focus on the meteorological ones, but from all these Earth explorers and the Sentinels, there are huge amounts of products that are being output. So I'm not talking about satellite imagery, um, and the access and the processing is, um, let's say, solved by solutions such as OpenEO, and you've just heard about that. But about all the products that result from the scientific studies that we do in ESA, um, and that we've funded over, across the years. And how this process works is that we have typically independent science teams that get all this data and use their own tools and their own methods um, on their own machines, or more recently in the cloud, um, and they output some of the they output some very interesting um, global products. So imagine all the um, climate variables or products like um, albedo or the ocean topography or ocean currents, um, ozone, stuff like this. Um, so all these um, products, um, they, of course, they're documented in some publications and they're made, sometimes they're made available openly. Usually they're made available, available openly. But um, there's no specific guidelines coming from ESA on how should you um, keep these products and make them available in the, in the long term. So to ensure this um, sustainable um, access um, um, and reuse of, of uh, these scientific products that are output by all of these projects, um, the first question that we asked was, how many are there? Um, where are they? And we realized that many of those are sitting um, either on some scattered websites or um, in the lucky case, they have a DOI and they are accessible through some catalog um, service. Uh, but in many cases, sadly, they're just lost because the team that was working on that is just not working anymore. So um, open science, um, we've started looking into open science these many years, um, um, basically building um, solutions um, that are open or that promote open science. But um, with this background that I've just um, laid out, um, it's clear that we need to do, we need to do more. Um, so what ESA is now currently looking to do is to enable sustainable and impactful open science in the long term. So this means take care of all these very precious scientific products that we um, have from all the teams that are working on that. So we, um, as part of this effort, um, or, or this is part of a bigger effort that is uh, building this open science framework, and this includes this dedicated set of tools and common practices to make effective scientific data management. 
Um, this um, looks to support open innovation, advanced science, earth science in particular, and increase community participation. Um, this, of course, means that we would have to um, provide guidelines to the community, the, open, uh, the earth observation community, on how to do properly um, open source development for earth science. Um, we're building, of course, on a lot of elements that exist already. Um, and um, some of these elements are on, on the screen. Um, one of the main um, um, yeah, pillars that support um, our efforts in this direction is the development of the digital platforms. Um, we have, um, of course, um, keeping, we're keeping a close eye on um, making sure things are interoperable. Standardization is on this slide as well. Um, and there are several solutions that, that we're currently working to develop. Probably more are coming. But just to name a few, um, there's the Eurodata Cube effort, the OpenEO platform is one of them, uh, and the uh, Earth Observation um, Exploitation Platform Common Architecture, which is um, looking to um, develop open source building blocks that would enable um, easier um, development of exploitation platforms that are by default or by design interoperable. And this is um, what so the EOAPCA, or the common architecture in short, is what is contributing to the development of this catalog that we're presenting today. Um, reproducibility is key. Um, and for this, um, we're trying to uh, make sure, uh, or to, to put, we're laying now the foundation, basically, for reproducible science, for reproducible workflows. Um, with um, elements such as the Earth System Data Lab, so building collaborative um, development environments, or making sure that these um, results are um, properly documented, accessible, in the long term, dis term discoverable through programmatic means and so forth. Um, community is very important, so um, we have um, a number of, of initiatives. I'm just going to mention the Estrian Science Hub. That's an initiative that is um, bringing external experts in Astrin to do science with our scientists and using all these collaborative tools that we're making available, and the EOScience Science Cluster that is, again, um, bringing different projects together. And of course, a lot of strategic partnerships with NASA, uh, with um, JAXA, with uh, OGC, and so forth. So this Open Science Catalog uh, that we're presenting today, it's a new project. Um, it gathers, it tries to make um, all these um, um, science products discoverable and accessible um, in an easy way and programmatically for, um, uh, for the community, and it contributes to this framework. So what it is, it's a catalog of geoscience products, data sets, and resources that are developed in the frame of projects that we fund. Uh, it provides a means for discovery, for access um, to these products, uh, using unified metadata across all sorts of heterogeneous sources, using common dictionaries, um, and um, also it's a tool for us to understand what are the gaps. Um, for example, um, if we're building, if we're developing ozone products, uh, for how many years have we done this? Um, do we have a, a lack in observation, I don't know, for, for three years in a row? Do we have you know, a lack of observation spatially and so forth? So it also offers us a, a synoptic view and helps us better identify where we need to invest more. So um, I'm handing over to Fabian to go through the technology stack and all the technical details. Thank you, Anka. Um, okay, so first, um, I want to say that we want to we want to build a service with existing technology, with existing building blocks. Uh, for example, EOAPCA, you mentioned already the EO exploitation, pla exploitation platform for com common architecture, which already provides us with uh, with a good set of, of of tools and a good set of, of components that we can uh, easily re reuse in order to to build uh, the open science catalog. Um, because of that, and not also because of that, uh, also because it is convenient and a very stable tool, we are building on a Kubernetes cluster and we're using Flux as a configuration management to simply uh, grow a large and, and configure our cluster components. We're building a user interface using the Vue um, component library, which is a really great tool in order to build rich uh, client platforms. Um, in order to keep the history and in order to, to build the static catalog, we're reusing uh, Git and GitHub um, facilities in order to keep the history, keeping a Git repository of all the records in order to, to uh, see the change tracking of, of the projects, products, and variables over time, um, which is then exported using GitHub Actions. So we always have um, a clear picture of what is currently at the main branch of the, of the catalog store. 
we export everything. Uh, of the, so the whole contents of the catalog is exported in stack format, a static stack catalog. I'll be talking about the details of that soon. And then we're using PySysW as a, as a dynamic front end for this whole catalog, which gives a rich set of, of services and interfaces that we can then use in the client or can be used by other clients if, if they so inclined. And then there's a couple of supporting uh, technologies that we, that we rarely use. Good. Um, first off, I'd like to talk about the, the whole architecture. So there is, of course, the, the front end, which is the main focus point of, of the user interaction. Um, we are then, so this, this communicates to various other components. So one we call from inheriting from the EOAPCA, uh, the resource management, which incorporates the resource catalogs. This is the catalog component that we use for dynamic queries. But it also, um, pulls data from the static catalog, which is the main source of truth of the actual catalog contents. In order to make contributions or to allow users to, to provide changes to the catalog, we provide a backend API, which handles the interactions to GitHub and the Git repository. Um, we also have user management, which allows us to, to manage the users and also allow users to self-register. And we can also promote users to, to data owners, in which, which allows them to make contributions. The catalog store is a simple Git repository. Um, as I already said, it allows us to, to keep the history of, of, the, of the catalog. And we're using GitHub Actions in order to produce the static catalog. I'd like to show you some images of the, of the front end. The front end is uh, allowing users to disseminate the contents of the Open Science catalog. So it uh, gives some overview information. We call them metrics and on statistics. And it also allows you users to, to search for uh, what we have, uh, themes, variables, projects, and products. So those are the main components, the main um, records of the, of the Open Science Catalog. And also through this, this user interface, it allows uh, users to propose changes. It's not that they are immediately affected, but they need to be uh, discussed and approved or can also be disapproved of, and so they, they will not be merged into the, into the contents of the Open Science Catalog. What you see here is the landing page of the Open Science Catalog frontend. And you can already see that we have some, um, some very distinct um, theme handling. And this is a very basically a hierarchical uh, catalog that you can simply click through. So you can go through the, through the themes, and then to the variables, then to the projects and products that you're interested in. Um, it works this way. Um, it also is possible to, to get some um, statistics and, and common metadata combined um, and are exposed using metrics. So you can see the temporal and also the spatial distribution of your data sets and also which uh, missions are involved and also which projects are involved and also the areas of the, of the, of the earth um, where you can find these products and projects. Um, we also have an extensive search capability for searching variables, themes, projects, and products. And uh, we have a user interface mask to uh, allow you to, to interact with the catalog. Um, also, you can, as we said, we can, you can also submit changes and then you can um, see your contributions that you have made to the Open Science Catalog. Um, the, the front end is talking to the back end API in order to, to, to submit those change requests and when you want to change a record um, for whatever kind. It's basically a facade for the, to, to make it easier to interact with the GitHub API. And this is also ties in with the user management where we can store extra credentials and then can enrich the pull request made on GitHub by the user credentials. So we can, we can then uh, relate each pull request to the user that actually made the pull request. The catalog store, as mentioned already, is a Git repository which, uh, which stores the themes, variables, projects, and products as JSON files. So there's text files. So it's easy to get file differences uh, and you, so it's easy to discuss the changes that are proposed. But it's also just easy to, to see uh, in, in one glance what has changed over time for this particular product. Submissions are managed as pull requests. Um, which is an easy way to, to discuss changes and also to finally approve or disapprove them. And then uh, also on GitHub, there is a CI pipeline that is actually exporting the contents of the Open Science Catalog as a static stack catalog on, on GitHub pages. Right, the static catalog. So this is 
um, a full-blown uh, stack catalog that is uh, statically deployed on GitHub pages. Uh, we are reusing various extensions and uh, also the core specification. We try to map everything that to, to fields that are already known uh, in, the, in, the, in the ecosystem. But it's not possible for all the fields, for all the metadata that, that we have. So we have created an open science, spe science catalog specific extension. Um, the main entry point is the catalog JSON, which allows uh, us to walk through the, the whole catalog in one go. Uh, we also uh, export additional metadata for easy access, uh, especially in the statistics and metrics page on the front end. So this is the metrics JSON and the code list XML. So other software can reuse uh, these, these files in order to uh, enrich the information. Variables themes are exported as stack collections. Projects and products are exported as stack items. Um, and we also um, export ISO XML metadata, which we need in a later step, but they can also be used by anyone else who is inclined to use them. Um, just for the, because we can basically, we also export a, a stack browser instance actually configured to, to the stack catalog, so it's easy um, to, to use and it's also a catalog interface. It's not the main product, but we can, we simply use it because we can. Right, um, now to the dynamic parts. We, um, so there's the, the most important dynamic part is the resource catalog, which is based in PyCSW. But in order to feed it, we need several components uh, to do so. So one is the harvester, which is actually just pointing to the, to the catalog JSON and it walks the whole tree and, and then exports uh, all, the, all the stack items and pushes them via the registrar into the PyCSW where we again have a nice interface or nice interfaces, OGC compliant and also stack API compliant to then again search uh, for the records in a dynamic way. So this concludes the whole loop, the whole journey of the metadata through the Open Science Catalog. I, I hope you find, found it interesting and I would like to thank you for your attention. And maybe Anko wants to join me again. And we are, of course, open to questions. <laughs>